the quotient rule, it's the next rule that we're going to talk about. And it really follows a similar pattern to the product rule, but it's slightly different. And so you can see it there, f of x divided by g of x prime is equal to g of x, f prime of x. That is an f prime, even though it doesn't, sometimes it looks like it's just sort of an f with a weird typo on it. So, whoa, we didn't want to do that. We'll just move that over. So you can kind of emphasize that's f prime. And then it's minus f of x, g prime of x, all divided by g of x squared. So the quotient rule, again, like the product rule, isn't telling you how to take the derivative in terms of changing the function. The power rule does that. The constant rule does that. But this just tells you the order in which you need to take the derivative. So the way that I remember it, if it's helpful to you, and it may not be, uh, you maybe just want to remember it the way that it's written. But I just like to think of this as the bottom function. And then f of x I, I treat as the top function. So the way I remember it is the bottom times the derivative of the top. So I say top prime minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. So the bottom prime divided by the bottom squared. That's how I remember it. With the product rule, because there was a plus in between, it didn't matter what order we did it in. In other words, you could take one function and its derivative, but it doesn't matter the order. Here it does. It has to be the bottom first times the derivative of the top, and then minus, because a minus b is not the same thing as b minus a. The top times the bottom prime. So we're going to follow our pattern of proving these. I'm going to prove this to you, show you where it comes from. And then we will use it to practice a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with a function. And I'm going to call it app capital, not apital. f of x equals f of x over g of x. But I'm going to do a slightly different thing. We use the product rule to... Well, sorry, we, we use the limit definition of the derivative to prove the product rule. So what we're going to do is instead of going back to the limit definition of the derivative, which we could do, we're going to instead use the product rule to prove the quotient rule. But it still traces back to ultimately the limit definition of the derivative. So if you look at this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as a product. Okay, so I'm just going to multiply the g of x up here. And then I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. So the derivative of f of x is f prime of x. And then this is a product. So it's the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. Okay, so there's my derivative. And what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to solve for this term right here. I want f prime of x by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is move the f of x g prime of x over to the other side. So I'm going to get this. Okay. And then I'm going to divide by g of x. But I'm also, I'm going to replace this. This was, if you look way back up at the beginning, no, not that it's that far, but f of x, capital of x is f of x over g of x. So I'm going to actually replace that here. Okay. So it becomes this. So this f prime is here. This became this. Okay. That's where that came from. And then g prime of x is just still there, and I'm dividing by g of x. And so then all I'm going to do is to make this uh, not a complex fraction, I'm going to multiply everything on the top and the bottom by g of x. I'm going to multiply by g of x, and I'm going to multiply by g of x. And I'm talking about multiplying the entire thing. So if I sort of put brackets around this whole top and this whole bottom is just one term. So what that's going to give me is g of x times f prime of x. Right, and then minus g prime of x times f of x, and it's all going to end up being over g of x squared. Okay, so you end up with, and actually, I'm going to just these don't need to be here really because I'm multiplying by g of x. So you end up with, I take these out the. That's what happens when I multiply the top and bottom by g of x, and that is the quotient rule. That is the form of the quotient rule. So I've proved that it's true. I've proved it. Okay, so we can say, you know, QED, we've proved this, but we've proved it using the product rule just to make our lives a little bit easier instead of going all the way back to the definition of the derivative. So that is how I know that this works. So let's actually do it. 
So here's an example. I have x squared. I think what I'm going to do, actually, just bear with me one second. I think I'm going to erase all of this and go through it with you because sometimes when you just reveal things, it doesn't necessarily make the same impact. So we'll just give me one more second here. We'll get rid of all this stuff. And we'll go up here and do it on our own. So what I'm going to do, f prime of x is going to equal, and we're going to start using the quotient rule. The quotient rule says take the bottom function, so that's x cubed plus 1, and multiply it by the derivative of the top. So the derivative of this function, the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 2x is 2. The derivative of minus 3 is 0. So I get this. Then it's minus... So again, if you want to write this over top, just so you can kind of keep track, that's the bottom, that's the top prime, then it's minus the top, which is x squared plus 2x minus 3, and it's multiplied by the bottom derivative. So the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, and the derivative of 1 is 0. So this is the bottom prime. And then it's all divided by the bottom squared. So it's all divided by x cubed plus 1 squared. That's my derivative. Now, it's possible if you want to, to expand the top and simplify, because there are going to be like terms, like x cubed times 2x is going to give you 2x to the fourth, and this is going to give you minus 3x squared times x squared is going to give you minus 3x to the fourth. So it is possible to expand and make it smaller. But what I want to show you right now, and what I'm interested in right now, is not your ability to simplify. So I'm, I just want to show you, here's the initial step. This is what you do to get the derivative. And from there, we can simplify afterwards. But I want you just to grasp that. All right, so here's another example. And again, I'm going to erase this stuff so we can do it together. And we're going to leave it unsimplified. And we're going to leave it unsimplified for now just because... I want you to understand just the concept of the quotient rule. Your ability to simplify is important. I'm not trying to take that away from this, but what I really want to focus on is just applying that quotient rule. So the quotient rule says take the bottom function. So that's 1 plus 2x. We're going to multiply that by the derivative of root x. And we talked about this before, but the derivative of root x, we're just going to write as 1 over 2 root x. Okay, then it's minus the top, which is root x times the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the bottom is 1, first of all, give, becomes 0, and then 2x becomes 2. So the derivative of that whole thing is just 2, okay, because that's a constant, and then that's a power rule. And then it was divided by 1 plus 2x all squared. And I'm going to leave it like that. That's the derivative. That is not the simplified derivative, and it's important to simplify, but for right now, just trying to get the concept down. Okay, let's do another one. And again, we'll just walk our way through it. So we go y prime here. We're going to take the bottom function, so 3x plus 4. We're going to multiply it by the derivative of the top, the derivative of x plus 2. The derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of 2 is 0, so that's just 1. And then it's minus the top function, which is x plus 2. Multiply by the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the bottom, that's going to be the derivative of that is 3. And the derivative of 4 is 0. And it's all divided by 3x plus 4 squared. And that's the quotient rule. So we're going to practice more of that. And you can make these you know, functions more complicated. And they will get more complicated. But that is the premise of the quotient rule. Okay, so we can just do one more example. I think we have time in the video to do that. Yep. So let's go, let's say y is you know, 3x squared minus 5x plus 7. And we're going to divide that by x cubed minus 3 root x. Okay, so a little bit more complicated. So let's find y prime. y prime is going to be the bottom function, x cubed minus 3 root x, multiplied by the derivative of the top, the derivative of 3x squared, that's 6x. The root of 5x, or minus 5x is minus 5. Then we go minus the top function, so that's 3x squared minus 5x plus 7. Multiply by the derivative of the bottom, the derivative of 3, or x cubed, sorry, is 3x squared, and the derivative of 3 root x is 3 over 2 root x. Okay? 
because remember the derivative of root x is 1 over 2 root x and we're just multiplying it by 3. Okay, so if you're wondering how did that become that, what I'm saying is it's 3 times 1 over 2 root x. Okay, and then it's all divided by this whole thing is divided by x cubed minus 3 root x all squared. Okay. And again, I'm not simplifying, but if the question doesn't say don't simplify, then you should. It's just that I, I'm in the this video context, I just am trying to hit home that main concept of the quotient rule. Okay, so we're going to leave it there. We'll do more practice from the textbook, but that's the quotient rule. Have a pleasant evening.